<laughs> well, this aesthetic is a surprise. This is not our house. This is actually a cottage we're staying at. I think I packed everything I need. The battery is running dangerously low on this camera though. Don't die, please. And now, the story of a family who bought a 100 year old home and the choices they made to make it their own. It's the shape of home. If you're just tuning in now to my little series, previously I gave a tour of our entire home before it went through renovation. Good old empty tour, we love it on YouTube. And then the last episode began the demolition of our entire main floor, as well as this closet area that separated two of our bedrooms. Obviously I had to indulge myself in a little walk through closet joke. <laughs> and in the previous episode we covered some of the surprises, like we wanted the stairs to be completely open but we found out that there were some load-bearing studs beside them, and the subsequent problem-solving. A lot of what's been done so far is more structural, the bones of the project, if you will, but today we are getting into the more surface things, aka the things everyone will see when they come over to our house. <laughs> Yay! Grabbing a few oh, finishing no, no, no. touches okay, today, okay. we just selected our carpet for the stairs and we are here now in some industrial area to choose our countertop. This is what I was excited to see. The exposed staircase. Oh my goodness. We really did not know what to expect once the old carpet was removed. Wooden stairs with a little bit of uh, tracings of a runner that used to go up. The stairs are relatively steep, so I think for safety, we are going to stick to carpeting them just to give us a little bit more grip. Actually, this whole renovation, I had been very, very eager to see the carpet off the stairs because I have, I have dreams, I have things I would love to do with the stairs, but it depended really on what was there existing. And turned out the wood was a bit old, a bit cracked, and there was some gaps here and there, and also some of the steps were a bit rickety and loose. We were just relieved that it was in good enough condition that we could just put a fresh carpet on it. Feel like that's just a little bit better for our baby to learn how to navigate the stairs. And then later, maybe when I have more funds <laughs> saved, <laughs> perhaps the stairs can evolve into something even more fanciful. <laughs> So the day the carpet installers came for the stairs, it actually was the same day as the wallpaper people coming. If you recall last episode, I shared this inspo image for our powder room. And to make it happen, we got one full wall mirror. Part of that is to make the room feel bigger. And the other part is that I had decision fatigue and I didn't want to browse through any more mirrors. And I just said, if the mirror is the whole wall, I don't have to make any decision. And then the other thing we got is this custom mural. Before I chose this mural, as the complete theme of our powder room, I thought I should at least know more about the print. So if you will allow me to put on my museum curator glasses. <coughs> this print is part of a 1909 piece called Momoyogusa by Japanese artist Kamisaka Seka. It depicts three red crown cranes known as such because of that lovely patch of bare red skin on their crowns. They are among the rarest cranes in the world and have come to symbolize luck, longevity, fidelity due in part to their own characteristics such as having a relatively long lifespan and also monogamous tendencies so these these are faithful birds across all the countries in its migratory path it is a revered bird it appears in chinese japanese and korean relics and even now as the official logo of japan airlines actually i found this one fact to be so interestingly petty which is it was once a candidate to be the national animal of china but it was not selected because of its latin name grus japanon what grus Japonensis, Japanese crane. 
I did joke with Dan about installing this ourselves, but we are so glad we got the professionals to do it. Now that I've nerded out over this print, I actually am even more into how this image is basically as old as this house, about 100 years old, and that the artist Kamisaka Seka was known for balancing tradition and modernity, and that's something we're trying to achieve in this home too, like feeling refreshed, but also lived in. Like we can't, we don't want it to feel brand spanking new because it's, it's not. <laughs> I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but currently on Ikea, so many things are sold out. I think there's supply challenges as well as an increased demand for people to finally do the little home renovations or updates that they've been waiting to do. Anyways, there's basically no way in the Toronto area to get a complete Pax wardrobe, which is just such a affordable wardrobe option compared to so many other wardrobes. So we were very lucky. I found one on Facebook Marketplace, locked it in, and the people who sold it to us said that they would do their best to disassemble it in a preservative way. And so I guess we will find out today how well it comes together. Oh boy, here we go. Got him organized, let us begin. Yay. We're back at the house today, trying to put Marla down for a nap so we can work on these bad boys. Okay, I know the one room I haven't really talked about much is uh, the sewing studio. Ironically, the room that you're gonna see the most moving forward on this channel. When it comes to the sewing studio, we made a mistake. We left it out of the original quote with our contractors because I was all, let's demo it ourselves. We can learn to drywall, right? Painting it ourselves will be fun. And so we started to take it down ourselves, the old kitchen cabinets, the appliances, moving a laundry unit. We said, we can do it. And our baby said, I guess, but it will be much slower with me around. <laughs> so yeah, saving money is nice. Learning to do something ourselves is nice. Going months and months without a sewing area when your YouTube channel's core is sewing sounds like regret, smells like regret, feels like regret, looks like regret, tastes like regret. Anyway, so here it is fully emptied. We added it back to the quote. The walls are smooth. We have some aesthetic issues to tackle, like this exposed laundry vent. There's this electrical box. We have plumbing coming out of the floor. Lovely. And the pre-existing laundry fixtures are still on the wall, so. More creative problem solving will be necessary. Nothing new here. Around this time, our main floor kitchen area was finished enough to start working on a custom glass door. Ooh. Here's my attempt at photoshopping the door in place. And this is the design that we worked out with the door company that I found here in Toronto. I'm actually very excited about this custom door. This is on the main floor between the kitchen and the back room. Sorry, not trying to give you whiplash going like main floor, upper floor, main floor, upper floor. Marla can play there while we're in the kitchen. It can provide a little sound protection if someone wants to work there, or we can host an overnight guest. And the last big change here was this window. You, you see her back here? She went into a cocoon, a metamorphosis, and became a backdoor, which we love. Hello, this is the most current day, Wendy. Greetings. I thought I'd wrap up this video with talking about the money. To get a rough idea of the total cost, we had three different contractors come to see our home back when we first bought it. We walked them through it, showed them all the things we wanted to do, and they gave us kind of their best guess at what the quote would be. Keeping in mind there could be surprise things because the house is 100 years old and you could just find out that stuff was rotting or <laughs> things needed to be replaced, all that jazz. From those quotes and interactions, 
We chose the contractor we would like to proceed with. And to get the work started, one of the very first things we paid for was drawings and building permit because we did not want to be held up by the city trying to bust us for illegally constructing. There goes our first, $3,200. And then next, we had been warned by a few of our friends who did renovations that home appliances was super back ordered. And we knew we needed a fridge, a dishwasher, in range hood, picked the ones that we were told were in good supply condition and should arrive on time. $6,000 there. The next thing we needed to pick with our contractor so he could order it and have it arrive on time was flooring. For many residential homes, to get a durable hardwood look without the hardwood price tag, the popular options are vinyl and engineered hardwoods. Our contractor quoted engineered hardwood at roughly twice the cost per square feet than vinyl, so roughly $3 versus $6. And we went for the engineered hardwood. I guess we just really felt like we liked the finish and we really hope we don't have to change the floor for any reason anytime soon. Then, this is really reminding me how quickly we had to make all these decisions, but we also had to shop for all our kitchen and bathroom tiles. A completely new world for us, but our contractor did give us a guide with floor tiles. A decent price was anywhere between $5 to $8 per square feet, and for backsplash and wall tiles in the range of $10 to $15 per square feet. I'm so glad he said that to us because it really helped to level set. We were able to stay in that range range for most of our tiles, but we did splurge on two. One, the powder room floor was $27 per square feet, but we justified it because our powder room is a very small space. And two, the ensuite shower wall, that one was I think $19 per square feet. Hence our nervousness that we bought that one without ever seeing a sample of the tile, like literally only viewing it online. So. I'm glad it worked out. I tried to go through our estimate with our contractor and untangle the exact cost of all these flooring choices and the labor that would go into installing them. And it's just a little bit hard to parse out, but I'm gonna give you the total price of the renovation at the end. Um, what was next? Choosing our own hardware or finishing touches. So like faucets, handles, towel hooks, toilet paper holders, light fixtures, doorknobs. This was roughly $4,000. And then this custom door, for example, I wonder if you can guess the price. It's gonna be $7,000. And to this day, I still have not seen it in person. I believe maybe yesterday, it just finished being manufactured. So we are gonna get it installed soon. And I'll finally get to see the look and feel of it. IRL. So to pull back really quickly, I want to show the scope of the renovation to just try to give a sense of things. Here's a rough sketch of our main floor before, and here it is after. You can see there's a new back door. There's quite a few walls removed. We tore down and redid the kitchen. We relocated a bathroom and we opened up a staircase. There were many other things that happened too, but I feel like these were the biggest bodies of work. And on the upper floor, taking down that back room kitchen, we knocked out a closet area between two of the bedrooms to create an ensuite. Not pictured here, we also added a linen closet. This sounds like a smaller job on this floor, but there was still considerable impact on the neighboring rooms, which meant we still did touch baseboard, painting, electrical, plumbing, all those things still. So in total, I really don't know if this information is helpful to anyone, but our entire renovation all in is somewhere between 130 and 140,000 dollars and this is not even including like furniture and decor that i'm trying to be smart about but on that note whoopsies but on that note decorating the space is going to be the next segment of the shape of home and there will be a full tour at some point i really hope you guys have enjoyed peeking into our home and i hope to see you in future episodes if you have any questions because i just i'm not sure what types of things you guys are interested in pop them in the comments and i'll see you there love you all bye bye Thank you.